welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the only referral podcast where you can get real stories of real people getting real referrals. Every week we share inspiring stories and practical tips from people like you to take your repeat and referral business to the next level. I invite you to join our free private Facebook group. Go to joingengen.com. That's J-O-I-N-G-E-N-G-E-N.com and we'll add you to our referral group. I'm your host, Michael J. Mayer, and I'm so excited to share today's episode with you. So let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another amazing episode of Referrals Podcast, a very, very special edition today. Right now, I am holding up a Abraham Lincoln edition of the $5 bill. You guys probably look at these things. You probably have one in your wallet. You probably, would you even pick it up if it was on the ground? You probably would a $5 bill. And in today's world, $5, they say, just isn't worth what it used to be. But what is the power of $5? We're going to explore that today and talk about an exciting new book that's out that you can get very quickly, and it could change your life forever. Could $5 change your life forever? Maybe so. We'll explore that today. I cannot wait. I am going to make you wait, though, because the first thing is I'm going to give a shout out to Cara Epstein. She is a team leader for Keller Williams First Atlanta in Sandy Springs, Georgia. And she said, feeling incredibly grateful and inspired after the masterful Michael J. Mayer poured into our agents at the highest level. The morning started with an exclusive mastermind with our top 10% producers and was followed by a group session to a packed house. Michael's insights and wisdom from years of experience left a lasting impact on all of us. Thank you, Michael, for your time and for sharing your invaluable knowledge. That is from Cara. Thank you, Cara. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I haven't done an office presentation in years. Standing room only made it feel high energy. And honestly, it was fantastic. And here's the thing. If you want me to speak, let me know. Just go to referco.com. Check us out. I'd love to come and speak. We can talk about it, see how we can make it the biggest win for you. I'd love to get that opportunity. Speaking of opportunities, are you looking for referrals? If so, you need to join our Facebook group. We are over 10,000 strong and we trade referrals every single day. You can join it at joingengen.com. Join the generosity generation today. We'd love to have you. If you've listened to this podcast, you like what you hear, you're probably going to find that you like the people in the generosity generation. You're kind you're our kind of people and if you're looking for that kind of people, then we're your kind of people. Join GenGen.com. Join the generosity generation at joingengen.com. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce our special guest today. Our guest today is a book publisher and author. He also founded Author Masterminds and Readers and Writers Book Club. Throughout his publishing career, he and his wife, Lois, have brought the works of more than 1,000 authors to life, sharing diverse stories with readers worldwide. As the founder of the Readers and Writers Book Club, Evan fosters a vibrant community for literature enthusiasts, helping both established and emerging writers find their voices and audiences. Beyond publishing, Evan has contributed his editorial expertise to various national magazines and authored five books. His passion for storytelling is matched only by his commitment to promoting and supporting authors from all backgrounds ensuring a rich tapestry of voices is heard. An Alaska resident since 1957, our guest combines his love of the outdoors with his literary pursuits, often drawing inspiration from his surroundings. A seasoned pilot and avid outdoorsman, he, use, he uses these experiences to enrich the narratives he helps create and publish. With a career marked by both innovation and a deep respect for the craft of writing, Evan Swinton has left an indelible mark on the publishing world, continuously championing the power of storytelling. Without further ado, let's welcome to Referrals Podcast, Mr. Evan Swinton. Evan, wow. welcome. Wow. Thank you, Michael. That, that was wonderful. That just that uh, I, I I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Thank you. 
Well, I can tell a writer wrote your bio because because of the words that were used, you know, yeah. enthusiasts and and so on and so forth. So I actually enjoyed reading that. Normally, I'm reading like eighth grade bios, you know, so I enjoyed that. I appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate the time it took you to, uh, you know, put that together and, and come here today. I really do. And I want to kind of start with what was interesting is somehow I ended up on your list and I don't know how I did. I don't know. I, I, either I got attracted to it by something you wrote or, or just got on it. Um, I have been loving these stories of these famous authors and the inspiration and the catalytic impact that they had, not just on the writing world, but, but on the, the human species, you know? So how did I get on your list? Like how, how, how did this all get started? <laughs> well, I think I got on your list. Oh, okay. <laughs> you sent me something. And uh, so I figured uh, if, if you was brave enough to send me something, I could be brave enough and send you something. And, and uh, you responded. And so uh, that's, I think that's how it is. Uh, uh, well, I how- love yeah, I love it. I I love the 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 bits about the different authors and and uh, you know what they had to go through to to write the books. Frankenstein, you know what an impact that was, and um, all of the different authors that you featured. You obviously have a love of writing. Yeah, well, uh, interesting enough, I, I I often say I'm not a writer, and I I graduated from high school because my mother did my homework. <laughs> and I'm and I'm I'm dealing with authors all the time who have PhDs and and multiple PhDs and uh, I have just uh, have a God given talent to improve their work. Mm. I can't write their work, but I can improve it. Now, is it editorially or is it? Um, you know, when I wrote Seven L, I ran it through two editors. One editor was a Yale professor, and she was very grammatically correct. Like, you're not going to find any grammar errors in 7L. It was literally, it was like the 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 house marm, you know, that you you kind of imagine as the, like, beating it down the drum. And, and I didn't implement everything she said, but but definitely. And then the other one I had edited it for readability and smoothness if that makes a sense you know i had the word hors d'oeuvres in there they challenged me on it and said do you want people to stop at this word or do you want to keep the flow going and and i just thought that was an excellent question and they go well because they're gonna it just looks weird on paper because of how it's spelled and then they want to go check the dictionary did that guy spell it right and, you know, so we changed it to like small appetizers or, or snacks or something, but it was just like, so it read right through and they didn't, didn't hesitate. And, uh, is, is it a combination of those or, or how do you edit when you edit? Well, we, uh, we work with editors. Okay. Uh, I'm not an editor. I, I say I'm a general contractor. Okay. So I've, I have worldwide. That's the thing with today's world. I have, I can tap into the world's best of everything and do. And so I, I, we, we work with writers or with editors and depending on the content of the, what the writer's writing about, why a different editor be, uh, will do. Cause some of them, they need to, they're writing to a, a an audience that is business-like it's needs to be a business-like editor where if it's a novel by something else, but one of the things that our authors have um, found is that uh, AI, artificial intelligence, but but then of course that's a AI in some places a four letter word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but but we're 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 dealing with uh, AI right now. What you, you and I are talking, and that is is artificial intelligence. It is so we use it all the time. The, mm-hmm. the Google search is artificial intelligence. And, but they use a program uh, called Grammarly. Yeah. Uh, uh, you maybe have heard of it. You yep. maybe used it. And they do. And, and that program is just gets better every day. 
And so they've used that. Uh, and so some of the authors are using that, uh, at least in the preliminary uh, work, and uh, to get their work the way it should be, where they want it. Some of the things that authors have found is when they go to an editor, the editor has a tendency to put the editor's voice in it, and pretty mm -hmm. soon it doesn't sound like the author. Right, yeah. right. I thought right. that's what you was going to say when you was talking about two editors. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely kept it in my voice. And like I said, with the Yale professor, I didn't install all of her changes because some of it was very much uh, me and how I say things. But I, you know, 7L is actually wrote as what I called a power parable. So it, it is a parable in, an, in the fact that it's written in a, a novel style, but, but it is a business book with over 80 strategies incorporated into the book. And, and that I loved writing it that way because instead of just telling people, and my audience are typically realtors, you can't tell them anything, Evan, like literally, like if they're the, they're, you, you know, don't be commanding me, you know, don't tell me. So it's better just to show that crowd than tell them. So writing it in a love story made it more palatable for them. And it, you know, turned out to be okay. We sold over 200,000 copies so far. So it's, 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 it's obviously resonated with a lot of people, but that, that also makes my next book more challenging because it's like, all right, I've, I've, I've put a pretty high bar out there and I have to, I need to make it a power parable. And um, anyway, so it's been interesting to, to kind of try to duplicate the feet a little bit. Well, Michael, I suspect that down the road of uh, ways, uh, maybe even after your death, somebody's going to read that and they're going to do the same thing that we're doing now for Shakespeare. And for these, well, because, yeah, let's let's not get too far with it. But uh, no, well, yeah. no, no, let's uh, you know, <laughs> let, let's talk about it. Uh, you take uh, about oh, I would, I've been publishing more than forty years, and uh, we have uh, more than a thousand books out there, uh, and uh, some of them are bestsellers. Some of them we we published two books. We printed two books for a per wow persons, but. I discovered a little more than a year ago that almost everything in the world that has happened for good happened because some writer wrote about it mm. and took on took the challenge and uh, uh, and in some cases to their well difficult they, they, they lost their everything because of it but they changed mm. the world and so you're talking about writing a novel. Uh, and it's it has changed uh, realtors' world. Those that have read it, I'm sure. And uh, you you read about uh, you, in the opening. You talked about uh, real estate, where you went and went to the office and actually talked about it. And I suspect that you talked about the principles that you express in your book. For sure, you are. And so, for sure. So when you get uh, after your death. <laughs> why somebody's going to pick that up and say this novel written by Michael Mayer changed my life. Mm -hmm. Well, if you change one, you change everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. You're going to make me cry, man. And it's like, uh, that's, that's harder to do than you think. But uh, so that's actually a really impactful point on things that last forever. Yeah. And, and you're right. Writing a book, survives it's a it's a legacy item and you know what spurred that in my case was that i almost died you know in the introduction of my book i talk about you know having seven blood clots from a knee surgery that literally killed me for for 37 seconds and when i came to i i didn't have children at the time i wanted a child and more than i've ever wanted like i was very ambivalent. I was just like, if that happens, it happens. If not, no big deal. I'm really focused on my career. And then the other one is, man, I just about died with this referral system in me that could help everyone in real estate. And that night in intensive care after heart surgery, I outlined what became the book, interestingly enough. So you're talking about that legacy item and it is a legacy item you know it, it was spurred 
by wanting to have something that outlives myself and helps people far beyond just my simple life. And, and what's interesting is that does tie to our primary subject today is, is, you know, the power of, of $5. I held up $5 in the very beginning and, and uh, you know, how one act of kindness changed the world and think that is a catalytic of effect as well. So let's, let's roll into that. What inspired the, the creation of $5, how one act of kindness changed the world, the book, like that project, what inspired that? Well, uh, many years ago, more than 40 years ago, almost 50 years ago, I was uh, going home. Uh, we, we lived in uh, Palmer, Alaska, and uh, it's 30 miles, 38 miles from Anchorage. And I was going home and uh, it was a tough time for us financially. We were really hurting. I mean, every dollar counted. And I, I went into the gas station to get gas. And I think gas at that time in Alaska was 35 cents a gallon. So it wasn't like today's price. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, uh, I, I, and I gave, um, gave the, the clerk $20 for the gas, the, for the tank of gas. And in the change that she gave, gave me was a crisp, brand new $5 bill. And I'm, I've never done this before. And then that's not characteristic of me. Uh, so, uh, at least at that time, it certainly wasn't. And so on a, just a spur of the moment, I handed that $5 to the clerk. And I said, uh, do me a favor. The next person that comes in, give them this $5 and tell them have a nice day. Mm. And I walked out. Now, that's been more than 40 years, and I have no idea what happened to that $5. Mm. I'm, I'm in a clue. The clerk may have kept it. Uh, she may have passed it out. I have no idea. But it felt good. Uh, I felt good about it. And so I went home, and, and of course, I had to explain to my uh, late wife, Margaret, uh, that I had spent $5 to just <laughs> give it away. And and she supported it. And so for uh, the next three or four months, every time I gassed up, I did the same thing. Wow. And that changed me. Mm. Uh, and so uh, uh, my wife passed away a little more than 22 years ago. And, and I met and married Lois, who's now my companion. And Lois just has a a way of finding money laying on the street. It's always <laughs> their nickels or dimes, or that, you know. But uh, she was uh, she just picks it up and puts it in her purse, and she says, uh, it, "This is pennies from heaven." And yep. we about it. Well, one day we, we found a five dollar bill, mm. and she said, "This is not for me. This is for someone else." Mm. And so we were driving. Uh, up on Northern Lights Boulevard in uh, Minnesota, which people would know about if they've been to Anchorage. And here was somebody standing out there with a sign, not the usual sign that says, you know, we'll work for food or whatever. This one says, no, la no day labor today, meaning that they were, at least they represented that they were trying. Mm hmm and the law says, stop the car, go over there. This is, this is the guy that needs this $5. She just put it on the, uh, the counter in the, in the car where you put junk and stuff, you know, and yep. going over there and uh, she gave him the $5. And interesting, he, she had never seen him there before. So it was right close to where she drove every day when she was working and never saw him there before and nor since. So we have no idea what the $5 was. Well, we've talked about it. And we talked about what if we could trace that $5, what happened? Mm -hmm. Well, we decided that uh, we'll, we'll do a novel about it. Now in the novel, we can figure out what happened to every $5, what happened, how it changed the world. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. But uh, what we, we did is that uh, I uh, put an a inquiry out to a bunch of authors Tell them what we were going to do and how we were going to do it and ask them if they'd like to participate. And I had uh, eight authors, uh, six and six authors. Lois was uh, one of them, seven and myself. And so uh, I told them that you're going to be working anonymous 
you're not going to know how many authors are involved and you're not going to know who they are until <laughs> the project is completed. And so you'll have re you'll receive an assignment each Monday morning and you can work on it during the week. Uh, I don't want you to work on it more than one hour a day. Uh, and so we, we, once it got going, why, what, I would just give them the, the assignment to write the first first paragraph for this chapter. And so uh, uh, that's what that's what happened. This is like so Mission they, Impossible for writers. Yeah. Well, yeah I well, mean, like you, you sent them a little message and I, it wouldn't have surprised me if at the end it said, you know, this is going to self-construct after five minutes. And and uh, <laughs> I love this. The writers had to, uh, the writer, I can only, as a writer, the first <laughs> is, is, all right, it's Evan, I'll do it. Right. And then, and then they're like, what the heck am I doing? I had, that had to come up. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so anyway, they, uh, they sent this in, and so then I wrote a uh, uh, a uh, prompt to AI, and and the, uh, we wanted each chapter to be about twenty five hundred words, and the prompt to the AI was four thousand words, so I was very specific on what I wanted and how to put it together, and so they AI then assisted me in combining the eight first, uh, you know, the first paragraph of every, uh, every chapter. And I thought, I thought that the book would take quite a while to do. And so we, we started it in February and anticipated that we'd release it on Thanksgiving day. And so that would be an appropriate day to release it, mm -hmm. but we finished it much faster. And so we decided that, uh, we would release it on the Monday following Labor Day, that people were back from ho holidays and, you know, get, kind of getting back in the groove of life again after summer, and we'd release it then. And we found out that that, 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 uh, that day uh, is an important day in, in other aspects, and we just tapped right into it. We decided that we would release it uh, to just kind of get it started, not the book. We're not so much interested in whether the book is successful or not, but if it changes lives. And so we decided that uh, we would send out a hundred books and uh, free books to a selected group of people. And we would include in that book a letter of what we were doing and then also we would include a $5 bill. Mm. And we would ask them that between the time that they received the letter and uh, September the 9th, if they would uh, do some act of kindness with that $5. Now that $5 isn't like it was 40 years ago. It, you know, $5 then it meant something. And, and so that's the kind, it's the act of kindness that's interesting, going to be interesting here. And, and so anyway, that, that's kind of where we went. Now, we found out that the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints turns 100 on September the 9th. Hmm. And he has asked people to do just what we were asking them to do, to reach out to someone you know, ponder and pray about who it might be and reach out and do some kind of act, uh, act of kindness. Mm. And so it just hit to, to us. I mean, the, this whole process of us going through, I mean, I could just tell you story after story after story of how it, we were inspired to do it. It, it. This is beyond what I could possibly do. I, I could never do this myself. Yeah, this is definitely, it, it does remind me of the show where it talks about the um uh what is it called where it's kind of the not the boomerang effect the uh uh and not the domino effect it's the it's about like the act of kindness and pass it on pa play it forward play it forward right? it does remind me of the pay it forward movie where you know don't pay me back pay it forward and um let me ask you this like when 
when you gave the five dollars to the clerk and you said, Hey, listen, give it to the next person. First of all, is there anything that you think might have inspired that to happen? Like what triggered that, do you think? Well, you know, I don't know how you feel about it. I can tell you how I feel about it. Well, I want to know how you feel about it. And then I'll tell you how I feel about it. (laughs) (laughs) uh, My vision is pretty short. I can't see, you know, for for positive in the next hour. Uh, My father in heaven can see in the future. So my father in heaven saw $5, the book, and but needed to get it started someplace else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, had to work on me for more than 40 years to where the the world situation with technology and other things and my experience and uh, and my uh, having an association with authors and knowing how to do it and learning it and that could it could come out. So you know, I was uh, just directed to, to inspire to do it. Uh, period. Yeah. So just a just a spark, you'd say, you know, or or a or they call it a tap sometimes, right? A tap. Yeah. And and so uh, here's the the beautiful thing, right? Is that uh, how did you feel giving the money? You say giving the money? Yeah, giving the five dollars to the clerk. How did you feel? Oh yeah, I, I felt good. Yeah, I mean, and $5 there was super significant, right? Yeah. Today it's still significant, but back then it was it was probably five times as significant. Like yeah, we could probably yeah. probably give it that type of credit. And and the thing about it that that I love about it is is what if the clerk had just said I can't do that and gave it back? They and 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 there's an important point I want to I want to make here is that, you know, if she had she tried to give it back you might have fought. You might have fought her for it. You might have, you know, or just took it back and go. Well, that's a tap on her shoulder from God, telling me that I should just take it back and not have an argument with my wife, right, or whatever. But she took it, right, and she and and there's there's a there's an important point about that I believe from giving and receiving, is that a lot of times when people want to give to us we 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 deny it we throw our hand up we don't receive it and and what i need people to know is that we need to receive it we need to say okay when somebody wants to give take it and it's not because of how you feel it's because of how that person feels when they give it they they are they are giving it and they feel good giving it so don't take away that feeling of them giving it by, by your ego or pride or whatever it may be. If somebody wants to give you just accept it. Right. And, and gladfully. So just accept it and receive it. And, and what's interesting is, is that my biggest challenge with the people I consult is not them being generous givers. They're, they're great at it. In fact, that's what spurred me from your message is like my people are going to love the message of $5 and how one act of kindness changed the world. That, like that's them in a nutshell. What I have to teach them is how to be appreciative receivers, like be appreciative receivers. Don't just be generous givers, give, give, give until you're exhausted. You know, that doesn't do anybody any good is, Hey, listen, when somebody does want to give say yes and just accept it. And, and I'm so thankful to that clerk for just saying, okay, and here's the thing, just by knowing that little element, I guarantee she did not keep it. I guarantee somebody drove up there and they were getting a dollar of gas, maybe even putting it in a can because their car ran out of gas and then drove up and she gave the five bucks and they got to fill a half tank of their gas because of, because of you. I, that, and I don't know what happened with the five dollars, but what I really feel in my heart of hearts is that because she said yes so readily, she didn't keep it. Yeah, she, I, I, it, I it did. It did pay it forward, you know. And, and Evelyn, the store clerk in the book, uh, took the five dollars from Jerry Blevin, who was the. Oh, you wrote it as a novel. Oh, yes, yeah. let's go. So uh, uh, Evelyn, she received the five dollars, and uh, 
she her circumstances were that she could have used the five dollars. That's right. That same as the clerk. I bet even back then at that gas station. I bet. And uh, but she waited until someone came in and was buying groceries, and she could tell that she they didn't have enough money. And the, and when they got it to this check stand, she, she had to decide what to put back because mm -hmm. she didn't have the money to pay for it, and so. Evelyn gave her the five dollars, and then of course, now so so she's got the five dollars. But what Evelyn went, she did even better than that. She gave her the five dollars, and then uh, uh, took her own resources and paid her for the groceries. So mm. uh, the the lady that she gave it to took the five dollars home. Mm -hmm. and, so and I then, bet I bet there's a continued story from oh, that yeah. five dollars. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, so, that's on, good writing. And so that five dollars ends up in the uh, United Nations. Oh wow! Well, and, we have to read the book to find out oh, yeah. the, the the story behind that. But I love that. I wrote that you wrote it in a novel story. It's not just, uh, you know, like a bunch of stories about five dollars and what it could do to change the world, right? So I I love that. So what are some of the compelling stories or characters from five dollars? you know, other than Evelyn and, and, you know, kind of tell us one of the other stories about a, the $5 being passed along. You don't have to tell us about the United Nations one if you don't want. But. Okay. Well, one that I really like is, uh, is a guy that's living in a neighborhood and he has a, his neighbor has a, is, is a widow, older lady and kind of recluse now because of circumstances and, and so he acquired this five dollars, uh, and so he decided that he would give the five dollars to this rich widow, and so he did. And the rich widow responded, and uh, and so she had the resources to to take five dollars and multiply it to mm -hmm. others, and did, and and the the way that it affected her life and gave her a new meaning and a new life. Yeah. Love that. Uh, which brings up a, a strategy, if you will, that I've uh, employed and found to be true is like people all the time, this is referrals podcast. So tying it to, to something that, that is very much a referable situation. People sometimes ask me like, if I had to get a referral, like I really need to get business, like how would I get a referral? And and I have a I have hundreds of strategies on how to get a referral, but I tell them that the fastest way to get a referral is to meet with the most influential, wealthy, or successful person they know. Interview and ask them questions to grow, to learn. How did, you know, what's the secret to success? What's a characteristic of being successful? And then also find out something that is a challenge for them or a problem for them or something for them and help them conquer that challenge. So find the, the most successful person you know and help them in some way. And, and sometimes we feel like, well, we're not going to be able to help them. No, you sometimes you can help them just by listening to them. Sometimes you can help them by taking their advice, believe it or not. And so help them. And then what happened to me a lot was reciprocity kicked in and that influential person would bless me far beyond what I probably deserved or what I expected at all. And that is, that is like, it sounds strategic, but honestly, if I can just get a bunch of people meeting with successful people and learning and being humble enough to interview and ask questions of that person, uh, that's a great start anyway. But, but that, that is the truth. Like that is a strategy for getting a referral literally by the end of this week is to meet with a super successful a wealthy person or something. And like you said, they're in position with resources to help you far more than you are in a position to help yourself. 
And that happened to me over and over and over and over again as I grew my business in Kansas City, where these influential, successful people I just met with, asked them questions. I was in growth mode, still in growth mode today, but they reciprocated with referrals, with connections, with introductions, with networking, with doors opening, with the ability to go and shadow them for a day. And uh, honestly, that's built who I am today. So I love that. Love that. So uh, let me go back uh, to the kind of the beginning here, if you wouldn't mind, Michael. And that is, is that uh, we started this uh, association, you and I, by the uh, letters that I send out weekly. That's right. And, and I want your story. I want to send your story out of, of your struggles and uh, how you put it together and for, for the benefit of others. Would you do that for me? Uh, wow. You're asking me on the air. You're like my son. I have a 15 year old son. He has mastered getting the yes. He doesn't <laughs> ask in like, he doesn't ask just like in a private setting, he's got his friends there and he goes, Hey, listen, like you're the greatest dad ever. Will yeah. you do me a favor and let <laughs> us like all go to Chipotle and eat ch and eat burritos. Right. And it's like, you know, it's harder to say no in that scenario. So, you know, because and I and I'm the greatest dad in the world. So I'm like, sure, you can go. Right. And then he goes, can I have some money for the burritos? <laughs> right. And, it, and it's like, <laughs> dude, he is so smart. That was, but here's the thing, honestly, I would be honored and I'm humbled that you would even ask. And, and you, you said that you wanted a story of my struggles. You don't want that because, because nobody's going to read a thousand page email. I'll, uh, but I'll, I'll maybe share one struggle or a couple struggles and, yeah. and then you, you turn it into the, listen, I, and I'm telling the listeners here is if, if like Grant and, and, you know, Polly, I'm speaking to you guys that are, that are writing or have written a book and, um, you need to get on his list, right? It's Evan at publicationconsultants.com and a quick shout out here. You can get the book $5 at publicationconsultants.com or Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or anywhere else that books are typically sold, but publicationconsultants.com or email Evan at publicationconsultants.com and just say, Hey, put me on your list. It is, it is a delightful dabble into the change, the life changes and, and just the changes in the world that somebody that put pen to paper made. And uh, you, you're a phenomenal writer. Those are phenomenally written. Please, please tell me they weren't written by AI. <laughs> they are AI assisted. Okay. I'll take that. Like everything's AI assisted today, oh. but it's just like, it is so elegant and so well done. I appreciate that. And I'd be more than more than happy to do that. And so let's, let's, let's kind of jump into this theme of kindness. And, you know, why do you feel like the, that themes of kindness are important today in today's world? Well, of course, more important now than it's ever been. You know, the, the social media that's supposed to have brought us together is just splitting us apart. Uh, you know, the, the people just, fight over the internet and i i see some of my own children post and they're they're picking arguments with people and why you know it doesn't have no value or little value but if we can just come together and uh, and just say okay let's help each other yeah oh, and we all need help and there's as you mentioned there is there has to be a receiver for a giver. Mm -hmm. And so let, let's, let's start it. And, and it only takes just a little bit. And then there's, there's, you know, that $5 that you held in your hand today before the day or the week's over, give it to someone, pass it on. I definitely will. That, that, and, and I guarantee that. Uh, yeah. we will, we will figure out something cool to do with it. And it's going to probably not be a Chipotle burrito, just so you know. And, and just for the record, Chipotle is not a sponsor of referrals podcast, though. We would like to talk to them. They don't have to pay us in money, just pay us in burritos. And, yeah. um, if they do make that arrangement, I want all of you to know that you should not buy Chipotle stock because it will go down 
just on how many Chipotle burritos my son eats. So just that disclaimer before we go into the next step here. But all right. So we're going to, I'm going to make sure that uh, we do something cool with that, that $5. It does remind me of something my sister does every year at Christmas. Um, she actually gives $20 to each of the kids. So, you know, my sister has two children and then, you know, we have one, one child, my brother has three children and then my other brother has two children. And so they are tasked with giving $20 to something or someone. And then at Christmas, they, we give it to them at Thanksgiving or she gives it to them at Thanksgiving. And then by Christmas, she has a big puzzle with their name on it. And they've written over the years. And we've done this like seven years now where they've written what they did with that $20. And, you know, the stories, like they, they want to make you tear up and, and it's $20, like it, and it's $5. And you would think these are not significant amounts, but they've made big differences in people's lives. Yeah. In, in the giver and the receiver. That's right. On both ends. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love is, is, you know, is not only do sometimes the recipients cry at the, at receiving the money, but when Courtney and Marissa and Max are telling their story at Christmas, they're moved to tears from having the ability to give and it, and it wasn't even necessarily their, you know, their money. So I, I love it. I, you know, I love the, and, and this is what I, and I want to kind of bottom line it with what do you hope the readers will take away and how can they get involved in this global movement of kindness, kindness that the book is really promoting? Okay. That's a, a really a, a good question. And thanks for asking it. On uh, September the 9th, we have a nine, nine. $5 Facebook group. Uh, and so you can uh, just Google it and you can find $5 uh, Facebook group. And we're going to have a little event. We're going to have some contests and have opportunity for you that have uh, uh, taken $5 and spread, did some kind of act of kindness to share it. It would be a sh short uh, Facebook live event. We're going to do it on Zoom, just like we're doing here. And we're going to uh, broadcast it the same thing on uh, Facebook. So people can participate on Facebook or Zoom, whichever they prefer. Uh, and uh, we can just share it. The hope is that, uh, that others will uh, see the vision of helping others. Uh, you know, it's a it's like in the book. Uh, all of a sudden, I forgot the man's name in the book, but his his company. He said, "We need to be doing something like this. We need to be helping. We're gonna we're gonna start for our company a five dollar movement." Mm. I hope there's companies out there that will realize that hey, uh, we can we can do this. We have some influence with employees and with uh, customers, and we can do this. With communities, you know, uh, uh, one of the communities decide to have a five dollars day and help each other. And I hope that I hope there's a community at least out there one that will do it. Uh, so, you know, and, and quite honestly, I just hope that the, I have nine children, mm -hmm. I have, uh, uh, twenty six grandchildren and twenty seven great grandchildren, and uh, they do not know right now what we've done. Mm. We have not included them in this. Mm. I hope that they get that, and I hope that they respond. Yeah, that's that's going to be cool when they bring that up at Thanksgiving or Christmas, and yeah. you purposely did not tell them, so that you just you're seeing the power of word to mouth, word of mouth, and and the spread of this. I I love that. I love that. And all right, so and I'll go back to you. How has the experience of creating $5 influenced your perspective on storytelling and the impact of a small act of kindness? Well, I can just tell you this, that I already have it outlined for the next book. And it's all ready to go except the email to send out, uh, to give the instructions. And uh, Michael, you're going to be on the list. Uh -oh. You're going to be invited to participate. 
would just ask you to give us one hour a week, not a day, one hour a week maximum. And if you're if you are not finished with perfect within that hour, give us what you got. So it, it doesn't matter whether it's a dollar, five dollars, or a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars. Just give what you can get. Go back to the scriptures where the we the, the widows might. Mm-hmm. It's yep. the smallest coin that there, there was, but she yep. gave. She gave. She had. Yeah. yeah. Which the, honestly, that that leads me to Proverbs eleven twenty five, which is at the heart of my entire philosophy and literally that that proverb changed my life um it changed my entire outlook of life and proverbs 11:25 is a generous one shall be a prosperous one he who refreshes others shall himself be refreshed and and what caught me is that it started with a generous one shall be a prosperous one it started with the generous one. So generosity was first. So it was about being generous. And and it wasn't like a prosperous one shall be a generous one. If that was the phrase, I would have like, I would like, yeah, that makes sense. We give out of our surplus. We, we, you know, the prosperous people should be given, dang it. They should be giving and they should be, you know, they make millions. They should be, you know, doing whatever, like people always talk about with other people's money, what they should be doing with it. But that wasn't it. It was that he who is generous shall be prosperous. And it was like, I got to be generous first. And then I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what to do. Well, I found out there were ways to help that didn't, didn't cost any money. You know, I could connect people. I could think about people. I could talk about people and refer them and connect them and introduce them. Um, and, and, and then the second one was he, he who refreshes others shall himself be refreshed. Once again, I got to go first. I got to refresh others. And when I'm refreshing others, I am, I too shall be, well, here's what's amazing is when I'm refreshing others, I'm refreshed. When I, when you gave the five bucks, you were refreshed. And it's not a, a, it's, it's, it's instantaneous. It nearly simultaneous. And that's what I've discovered about generosity leading to prosperity is that generosity leads to reciprocity. In my philosophy, we need to teach people how to reciprocate to us if we can't, right? It's like if, you know, the best way to give to me is referrals. It's it's referral. You connect me, introduce me, refer me to someone I can help. Then three people win instead of just two. And then referrals lead to profitability in a business because the most profitable businesses are the ones that are worked mostly by word of mouth and, you know, don't have to market and advertise a lot. And then profitability is your business making money. Well, there's something more powerful than your business making money. And there's something more powerful than money. And that is freedom and choice and health and family and all of those things. Well, if you roll all of those words into one word, it's prosperity. So that's what's cool. Well, but it doesn't stop there. Prosperity leads to more generosity and not just more generosity, higher and more powerful generosity, which leads to higher and more powerful reciprocity, which leads to higher and more powerful referrals, which leads to higher and more powerful profit, which leads to higher and more powerful prosperity. And it's this, this, this wonderful helix, right? This spiral staircase kind of aspect to life. And that's, that's like, I live on that staircase and by, you know, running with that. I mean, like I said, Proverbs eleven twenty five is the basis of everything was the basis of seven L basis of referral mastery system and the basis of my life. And, um, you know, you, you hit it on the head is, is how, how powerful a small act of kindness can be for sure. Yeah. For, uh, the, the scripture also Going back to what you're talking about, you have to have faith in what you're doing. The uh, remember when the children of Israel was escaping from Egypt, they had to put their feet in the water before the the Red Sea parted. Mm-hmm. And I love that scene. And uh, uh, oh my gosh, what's the movie? All of a sudden, the name of the movie. There's by oh, oh, 
where he's out that has to step on the wall on the out into space yeah it was indiana jones and in the, the tomb yeah. of the tomb of uh something tomb of the skulls to, it now what, what was it yeah. Ah, it was Indiana Jones. I know that, right? Yeah, Where, yeah, 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 he had to take the step, and it was, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. And so, our uh, what we want, uh, of course, is uh, take the step. You know, yeah. follow follow Michael Mayer's example. He's going to do do something with five dollars this next few days, and do the same thing. And then, Michael, we invite you to come join us on the on the ninth and. And anyone else that'd like to join us, and let's just start. Let's start start a movement that uh, and participate in it that will change the world. Mm. Yeah, I love it. So September 9th, next Monday. Check out the five dollar Facebook group. They're going to be doing a Facebook Live. You can Google it or search it on Facebook. I'm sure you'll be able to find it pretty easily. September 9th. You can also get the book five dollars at publicationconsultants.com or Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or where books are typically sold. And also email evan at publicationconsultants.com and ask him to get on his list so that you can, I'm telling you, you're going to find a love of writing and a love of writers like he has. And I will tell you, Evan, this has been phenomenal. Like this has been a small act of kindness by you that is going to make an impact on our listeners. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you being here on referrals podcast today. Oh, well, it's been my pleasure and it's been my pleasure to get to know you. And now I'm going to have to get to know you better. Uh, well, I like that thought. I, and I'm definitely open to getting to know you better and, and find out. And someday you'll have to visit me in Atlanta and someday I'll have to visit you in Alaska because probably the single greatest vacation that my wife and son have been on was the one, the most amazing because we saw the Northern lights. We, we were definitely, um, we were awestruck by Alaska. And so. Yeah, I was uh, too, 1957 came here for five months and haven't left. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. When I saw that you were in Alaska and doing publication, I was just, oh my gosh, like that's, I thought you were, it was going to be New York or LA or Chicago. Right. And uh, I just love that it was from Alaska. It just de definitely gave me a different perspective on things. Well, Evan, I just, I just, like I said, I want any final words of wisdom for somebody who's listening. Um, you know, maybe they've got $5 in their pocket or, They've got a story to tell. What would what would advice would you give them? I just get the advice I would give is to follow the example of uh, Michael Mayer and Proverbs eleven twenty five and be generous, mm. be outgoing, and whatever you can do to help others, do it. Do a, do a, some act of kindness every day, and uh, and of course. When it comes to the internet and that, be kind. Just Love be, it. Yeah. Love Michael, it. you. This is this has been a really a, a wonderful experience to be here and associate with you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And likewise. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, we could probably go another hour on this. But the the idea is simple. Be kind. But are you implementing it on a daily basis? I would challenge you. Are you implementing this on a daily basis? And if not, why not? And sometimes, listen, we get busy. We have things to do. We've got our to-do list. Well, add a new to-do on your to-do list from now on. Daily kindness, daily generosity. Make it happen. Help someone. Reach out. Reach out. And if somebody reaches out to help you, receive it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been awesome. I've appreciated the heck out of this. One quick reminder, make sure you go to joingengen.com to join the Generosity Generation. That's our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. If you've liked what you've heard today, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, or you can share it, let other people know about it. If you're listening on iTunes or Google Stitcher or Audible, do me a favor and do other listeners a favor and review it. 
rate us, let other people know what you think. We appreciate it. We're nearing half a million downloads of referrals podcast because of you. That's an amazing number. So thank you. And we'll see you next time on referrals podcast. As always, thank you for listening to the referrals podcast and reviewing the show on your favorite app. We read every single review. And I know many people read the reviews and in some cases have even referred the people who have done reviews. And I give a shout out occasionally to the ones that I love the most. A very special thank you for sharing the show with other business people, salespeople, including realtors, lenders, warranty reps, title, and honestly, any business that wants and need referrals and what business doesn't want repeat business and referral business. Every time you share the show, you're potentially changing someone's life because they can go from pushy salespeople or trying to do business the traditional way to building a business based on love, generosity, and appreciation that floods them with referrals and repeat business. And when they go to bed at night, they can put their head on their pillow and relax because they understand that they can have peace of mind about where their next piece of business comes from. Go to joingengen.com and we'll add you to our private Facebook group. That's joingengen.com, J-O-I-N-G-E-N-G-E-N.com. We'd love to have you. And stay tuned for the next episode of Referrals Podcast.